This was a typical arrangement instituted by Airbus, by which it contracted third parties as business partners to increase its international footprint and to assist it in winning sales contracts in numerous jurisdictions. On this basis, when Airbus made a successful sale of aircraft, it will ordinarily pay a business partner a commission-based percentage value of the sale or a fixed amount of the aircraft. In this context, Airbus took the full benefit of the agency agreement with Foster and its associates and the services they provided to Airbus for a considerable length of time. This was so because the contract for the sale of the first 295s between Airbus and Ghana, which was clearly secured by Foster and his associates, was signed almost two months before Airbus issued its due diligence report on 30 September 2011, which led to the abrogation of the arrangement between Airbus and Foster and his associates. It was only when Airbus' due diligence mechanism discovered the familiar relationship between former President Mahama and Foster that it abrogated the relationship. The abrogation by Airbus of the agency arrangement certainly portended to work and did in fact work grave unfairness against Foster and his associates. Therefore, the concoction of a plan by senior leadership in SMO International and the Defense and Space Division of Airbus to deliberately circumvent Airbus compliance rules by substituting Company D or the company owned by Consultant 4 and Consultant 5 with the Spanish Intermediary 8 Organization 1 to ensure payments to Foster and his associates was probably a well-intentioned adventure, though apparently misguided, as it rendered the payments seemingly of doubtful provenance. It also appears to the OSP that the relationship between Airbus and Foster and his associates was, an, was neither one-off nor peculiar to the Airbus Ghana deal. Airbus had in place similar business partnership models with Foster and his associates in respect of business promotion in other African countries before the Airbus Ghana transaction. As we stated above, the UK and US deferred prosecution agreements did not include and cover the reference individuals. The agreed settlements were reached by the UK and US authorities with Airbus only. And it appears that Airbus accepted criminal culpability for bribery for itself, and also vicariously on behalf of the reference individuals, including its employees, agents, business partners, and Ghanaian public officials. And that the reference individuals appeared not to have been the rest subjects of the investigation by the UK and US authorities, and were not afforded the opportunity, if they were so minded to take it, to explain their actions and to present exculpatory evidence, if any. The OSP is unaware of any such analogous proceedings of, or framework in Ghana by which an entity could vicariously accept wholesale criminal responsibility on behalf of another, especially where that other was not a direct subject of the investigation and was available to answer for himself, but was not afforded the opportunity to do so and to present any exculpatory evidence he may have.